Hi, I'm Brandon Butler, and this is Copyright Session 7, Fair Use and TDM. As you've seen, fair use is a judge-made right that evolves as it is applied case by case. Lawsuits about research and education are few and far between, so TDM researchers are unusually fortunate to have a long and deep line of cases that provides fairly clear support for the kinds of things they do within copyright material. Search engine operators like Google were sued early in their history, then related machine learning and computer analysis technologies were challenged, and finally, massive digitization of research materials was challenged in the Google Books and Hadi Trust cases, which we'll explore in depth. What's key for TDM researchers to know is the courts have now blessed core TDM practices many times over. If anything is knowable in fair use law, we now know that these core text and data mining research methods are well suited for fair use. Let's take a look at how fair use applies to text and data mining using a recent example, uh, Authors Guild v. Google. This case arose when Google made digital copies of millions of books from partner research libraries and made the resulting corpus searchable through its Google Books service. They sent digital copies back to the libraries who provided the print books, and the libraries banded together to create the Hadi Trust to manage the collective collection of those scans, together with other digital content. Using Google Book Search, user, users could identify books that contained a desired word or phrase. Google search results showed limited snippets of the text, about an eighth of a page, so users could see their term in context and get a better sense of the results relevance to their interest. They also linked users to local libraries and online bookstores where copies of the work could be found. When the Authors Guild sued, alleging infringement, Google argued that book search was a quintessentially fair use. The influential Second Circuit Court of Appeal to Appeals agreed. The Authors Guild also sued Hottie Trust and some of its members in a separate case with the same result, fair use. For TDM researchers, it's important to look at the two key uses that the court was evaluating in this case. Comparing your activities to the ones analyzed here will be extremely helpful as you figure out how fair use might apply to your work. The uses in the Google Books case were, one, copying millions of complete in-copyright books to create the search index, and two, displaying snippets of in-copyright text as search results to users in the public and as uh, part of ingram graphs, showing the frequency of words and phrases in the corpus over time. These two practices, compiling works into a machine-readable corpus and revealing relevant portions of the corpus to the public to substantiate or instantiate the results of machine analysis, are likely to recur in many, many TDM projects. Researchers will learn a great deal from a close reading of the court's detailed application of fair use to these practices. Under the first factor, recall this asks us to look at the purpose and the character of the use, and central to that analysis is whether a use is transformative with transformative uses being much more likely to be found fair. In Authors Guild v. Google, the Second Circuit held that three key activities by Google were all highly transformative. First, copying the entire text of millions of books to create the searchable index. Second, creating the ingrams tool uh, in order to show the frequency of words and phrases in the corpus over time. And third, displaying snippets from the books as part of the search process to help users identify relevant results. The court said that the purpose of Google Books is to make available significant information about those books. The court held that this purpose is exactly the type of transformative purpose that fair use should enable. For example, Google Books allows users to track the frequency of references to the United States as either a single entity, the United States is, or an, in the plural, the United States are, and to see how those uses changed over time. In this way, text and data mining does not merely supersede the original purposes of the work, but instead adds something new with a further purpose or different character. The court gave fairly cursory treatment to this uh, second factor, which requires them to examine the nature of the copyrighted work. The court said nothing really influenced it one way or another with respect to this factor. Under the third factor, the amount and substantiality of the portion used, the court uh, evaluated whether the amount was reasonable in relation to the purpose of these uses. In this case, copying entire works was literally necessary to achieve the transformative purpose. If Google copied anything less than the totality of the original, 
the search function would not be reliable. The court also noticed that Google does not display a copy of the entire work to the public. The snippets of in-copyright text that Google does display are not a competing substitute for the original works. Under the fourth factor, the court concluded that snippet display uh, does not give searchers access to competing substitutes and therefore does not threaten rights holders with any significant harm to the value of their copyrights. The creation of the search index did not make any of the works available to consumers, so it had no direct market effect. The court also considered whether the search index was a derivative work that required a license, and the court concluded it was not. Unlike sequels, film adaptations, and translations, a search index does not represent the expressive aspects of the original work. The transformative purpose of a search index means it is not covered by the copyright's derivative works right. The Second Circuit held that Google Books was a fair use, finding the purpose of Google's copying of the original copyrighted books is to make available significant information about those books. This is a different function from the original expressive purpose of the books. The amount copied was reasonable in light of that purpose, and the amount revealed did not uh, represent a commercial threat to the original copyright holders. Let's take a look at one additional case, iParadigms. Uh, iParadigms created a plagiarism detection database comprised of student authored papers. Teachers can submit these student papers to iParadigms, which checks its database for matches. And in some cases, iParadigms retains submitted papers for use in future detections. A student, AV, brought a lawsuit claiming that iParadigms infringe students' copyrights by using their papers without permission. Citing the internet search engine cases, the Fourth Circuit held that iParadigms database was transformative because it was used for plagiarism detection and that that was an entirely different purpose from the original purpose of the term papers. Including entire works was an appropriate amount in light of that purpose, and so the use was found fair. So let's review the lessons we learn from the leading cases on text and data mining when it comes to the three core uses that are likely to occur in many TDM projects. Copying to create a database for a TDM analysis, using data derived from TDM analysis, and publishing data sets for, uh, that were used in or derived from TDM research. When creating a database or corpus, the cases tell us that TDM analysis is highly transformative and strongly favored by fair use. The appropriate amount for this work is typically the entire work, uh, even millions of entire works, and that's okay. And then creating such a database has no market effect and is not a licensable derivative work. The cases tell us that derived data does not infringe on the, copyright, on the rights of the copyright owner when it's comprised of unprotectable facts and ideas. Copyright in a work does not include a monopoly over facts about that work. Facts belong to everyone and are free to share. Publishing the data set, however, requires a separate fair use analysis. Look at the effects of data publication on the traditional market for the works in the data set. Uh, it's especially important to consider the amount you're going to release publicly and the security measures in place to prevent the kinds of access that could create cognizable harm to the market for that work. 